In, in setting up for this episode, I realized how big, how, bi how, how significant rather, of a financial blunder I've made. I bought this green sugar for drink garnishes. I thought, hmm, that's not gonna be enough. And then I bought more green sugar for garnishes. And then I went to the store last night and thought, oh, I never bought more green sugar. And I bought more fucking green sugar. So if anyone needs cookie decorating supply, shoot me an email, I guess. Please don't come to our apartment. Do not come to our apartment. I will mail it to you. Do not, don't, don't come near me. I don't like people. <laughs> hey there, hi there, hello there. My name is Michael. I'm a former bartender from the Kalamazoo, Michigan area. And today we are moving on to day eight of 25 Drinks of Christmas with a variation on a whiskey smash that is as green as Christmas garland, I'm telling you. A whiskey smash is a classic style sour cocktail that instead of using uh, just the lemon, uh, lemon or citrus juice, it actually involves you muddling the uh, juice out of pieces of the fruit alongside mint or other herbs and your main spirit. In general, it creates kind of a more complex flavor and something that I think we've managed to combine into an upstyle cocktail rather than a rocks or a sort of crushed pebble ice cocktail. In order to get this done, you'll need everything in front of you that you see. Um, you're going to need some bourbon. I would recommend uh, either Edna Williams Bottled and Bond or something of a similar proof and quality. You're also going to need a very small amount of creme de menthe. If you can't get creme de menthe, um, a bar spoon's worth of uh, peppermint or some kind of mint extract and a couple do uh, drops of green food coloring will accomplish the same thing. You're also going to need uh, a lemon for some lemon juice, uh, a lime for a garnish, um, cherries to complete that garnish, and what's in this little bottle right here. What you're looking at is one of my favorite fascinations this season, uh, a special cocktail syrup. This is a uh, honeyed green tea syrup. Uh, so this is uh, two cups of sugar, one cup of a strongly brewed green tea, like a kind of bitter brewed green tea, and then a third of a cup of honey, which I sort of dissolved and boiled together down into a simple syrup. This stuff is uh, kind of impressive, actually. It tastes like sweetened green tea, but not so much like you're drinking green tea. It's more like the essence of it. Um, when you put it alongside citrus and liquor, it, 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 it's playing a really subtle note in the background, but it makes a big difference compared to regular simple syrup. To begin, we have to actually do <laughs> something that I'm doing quite often this filming session. We have to do a uh, rim on our glass. This is gonna be served in a rocks glass over a single large cube, so if you're gonna wanna get like a double old fashioned glass. Uh, here I have some green sugar and corn syrup. I'm just gonna lightly tap this. I'm gonna do just like a half, like that. So you can choose whether or not you wanna actually drink from that side of the glass. I'm gonna set that aside while it dries and we'll get started on making the cocktail. Let's give you another shaken one. So we're gonna start with our shaker and I'm gonna start by throwing three quarters of an ounce of our green tea syrup into it. This one in particular was made with uh, nothing fancy, just Twining's, uh, Twining's green tea, but it was uh, their green tea, like matcha cranberry energized tea specifically. Um, you do get cranberry in the flavor. It's sort of artificial in the way it presents, but it's there. And it's not really necessary to this specific drink comp you know, composition, but it does add a little extra something if you're looking for it. Next, we're gonna do an ounce of lemon juice, freshly squeezed directly into the shaker. We're gonna move on to two ounces of our bourbon. I'm partial to Evan Williams Bottled and Bond because I do a lot of, I drink a lot of neat whiskey actually. And for a bourbon that is relatively cheap and very affordable in most places, um, it has really complex notes of like tobacco and uh, roasted peanuts, which do come through here actually. And for a bourbon, this isn't very sweet. So everything we're doing to add to it sort of makes it approachable, um, whereas most people probably aren't super fond of neat whiskey. The last ingredient we need to go for is just a third of an ounce of creme de menthe. So what, uh, what we're accomplishing here is first of all, dyeing the, green, uh, the drink green in a more natural way than using food dye. But we're also including a lot of flavors that are present in a whiskey smash. We've got our sweetness from a syrup, in this case a specialized one, our base of a bourbon liquor, um, sourness uh, and juice component from a lime, and then instead of using muddled mint leaves like you would normally see in a smash, we're substituting for our liqueur. Next up, we need to add some ice to this and give it a quick shake. All right, cap that up and give it a shake. I just realized I forgot to clean my cocktail stringer. Good job. Fucking, um. Once we're done shaking that, we're gonna go ahead and pull our glass back up. 
and I'm going to double strain this over a single large cube. Just gonna pour this over. And it's just a nice green color. And there's no lime in the drink, but because putting a big yellow wedge of lemon on the side here isn't really advisable, we're gonna go ahead and use a lime for our finish just to match the color. And we're going to do this by making a flag. So a flag in cocktail garnish terms is when you take a cocktail cherry and you wrap a piece of citrus around it, usually a full wheel. I've got some toothpicks here. I'm going to put this through the edge of this lime, just like that like right by the peel, basically. I'm gonna fish out a cherry. You basically put that all the way through until you can get it basically in the center of the toothpick. You fold the citrus over to put the toothpick back through it. And there you have a cocktail flag. Just rest that on the edge of the glass. In this case, it would be up against the ice so it'll hold its position. And there you have a nice list. Give it a taste. That is such an interesting drink. It is so, so odd and yet balanced in a weird way. So what you're getting when you first sip it, honestly, is kind of a bourbon impact. When I'm, when I'm reading almost immediately, in this particular case with the whiskey that I used, is the, the sort of note that comes up in whiskey of roasted peanuts, actually. Um, and it's not unwelcome because what it leads into is this sort of very bright, lemony, citrusy impact that's backed up by green tea bitterness. There's no bitters in this drink, but it presents as surprisingly bitter, actually, and that comes entirely from the tannins that are naturally present in tea. And the mint is right there on the bottom. It's kind of like at the tip of your tongue. It's creating this sort of experiential context to the whole drink. I think it works really well. It's definitely not the most approachable drink that I've made, but one that I think plenty of people can get behind as an alternative to a whiskey smash with a holiday spell on it. Would you like a sip? Yeah, sure. What are you thinking? Not your thing? No. Don't like it? Uh -uh. No. Is it the whiskey or the mint? Probably the whiskey. Fair, completely understandable. <laughs> this is not the most approachable whiskey you can use. If you were to throw Jim Beam, regular Evan Williams, um, just about any other really like middle of the road bourbon in here, it'd be a lot more approachable. I can't say I, I can't say I blame you, honestly. It's definitely not the most approachable thing. But if you like whiskey, and specifically if you like whiskey smashes, this is definitely emulating that same approach with a couple different things going on to make it unique. Not for everybody is the consensus, but if you're like me and you like whiskey and you're not afraid of having a, a like a kind of weird cocktail with a lot going on on it, honestly, <laughs> um, it's, it's good and you can definitely, it can be gotten behind, but most people won't. Well, that there, ladies and gentlemen, is a nice list. The most green drink I think I have ever made in my entire life. <laughs> if you like this video, go ahead and click that like button below and subscribe. The recipe is gonna be in the description if you wanna make this at home yourself. Let me know how it goes and see, uh, let me know if you try something different here. If you try a fresh mint, if you go a different way with some of the flavors, if you switch to lime, maybe it'd be more approachable, I don't know. Cause then it might be more like a, uh, a mojito without um, without the club soda in it. Maybe that'll be approachable, I don't know. But either way, thank you for joining me on this journey. Day eight of 25 days of cocktails is now complete. And hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow for day number nine. Until then, you have a good one. Have a good night. Bourbon, uh, or dark liquors in general, they permanently put uh, like the look of disgust on my face. <laughs> I probably can't see it because there's a spotlight on me, but I imagine you're wearing it now. I'm sorry. The next drink you will you'll like. Yeah, I tried it. It's good. Yeah, you like this one. So this one, this one, I'll let you taste, and then if you want it, you can just have it to wipe the memory of this out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>